the sound of White Cliffs Country. This is DCR. DCR. What's in an acronym? Well, in the case of DAD, or D-A-D, it's Dover Arts Development. So what is Dover Arts Development? DAD is not an organisation. DAD is at home in Dover. DAD is a creative voice and DAD encourages and speaks out for the arts in general and particularly within Dover District. DAD entered 2011 with its own studio space housed within the former Royal Mail Sorting Office, centrally located in Dover Town and available to artists as a studio share, but also acting for the first time as a physical home to Dover Arts Development. All in all, it seemed a good opportunity to catch up with DAD co-directors Joanna Jones and Claire Smith and let them explain the project's background and aims. One of our aims when we started was to find a kind of a, a public profile in Dover for our work. Both of our art practices were kind of very much studio-based and we felt that living in Dover, we wanted to not just be stuck in the studios, we wanted to be, well, we wanted to kind of implicate ourselves or be, be involved in Dover, really. And so, so, so it was a very kind of vague kind of aim, this idea mm. of getting out, out there somehow. What could we do in Dover? Dover was um, placed in between Folkestone, which was um, developing as a the creative quarter and Margate um, with the Turner Contemporary coming and, and, and obviously Dover has, has a, is in between those two and we wanted to make Dover part of that cultural landscape so that it would actually have a place on the cultural map but really how do you do that? We didn't want premises, we wanted we didn't want to be an institution, we didn't want to have an institution come to Dover um, and sort of just set up. And we started just thinking about what can we do and how can we do it and can the two of us do it together. Mm. So presumably you were also hoping that Dover would interact with you. You weren't just arriving. Well, that was um, very much part of it. What, not wanting to come with some idea that we might kind of lay on top of Dover, but rather at first go out to Dover and go round Dover. We started to meet always in a different cafe or a different pub or a different venue so that we could get a feel of what Dover was because we wanted something that would be kind of specific. We knew that if we could get to it, we would find something that Dover could do that other places couldn't do. But we didn't really know what that was. Um, it clearly meant going, finding out who was doing something here, who was here. Um, and the first thing we found out was that many musicians lived in Dover. Um, many musicians came back to Dover. There were pubs like the Louis Armstrong, which had built themselves as live venues. There was quite a lot of live music going on. In the visual arts, there was uh, fairly little, although we did discover that Astor School for the Arts, um, when we went up there, that you know people were were dealing with visual content as a main part of their um, school curriculum. Dance was going on in, say, St. Edmunds, but how to tap into those people and where did they go? And this was really uh, our concerns. And um, when are we talking about a time frame? When did all this begin to come together? We started in 2006 as a, as a partnership. And um, we started really, um, you know, th with this kind of idea of researching what we could do in Dover. But as, as, as time went on, this research actually developed and became a, a big project. And so um, instead of going from a, for a research grant, for our first grant from uh, the Arts Council, we actually went for a project grant and we got uh, money from the Arts Council and from Europe to do um, a European um, project. But yeah, so we started in 2006 mm -hmm. with a big project and then we've been going ever since, haven't we? And then in 2008 we, we incorporated as a, as a company limited by guarantee. Right. Um, and each project has ev evolved into a new project. So our projects always build really on previous projects because it's always a project gives rise you know, it has a lot of ideas that are contained within it, but obviously it gives rise or engenders new ideas. And, you, you know, there's only so much you can t contain within one piece of work. 
Um, so the, both in terms of people that we might work with again in, a, in another project, perhaps not in the, in the immediate next project, but we'll come back to it, or something that is just a slightly different take on something we might, we might work on. And so always at the heart of, of these projects has, has been the ways in which we can work with Dover and people in Dover. And we learned an awful lot from our first project in the sense of the reaction to the big photographs that we put out in, 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 in the centre of town. We hadn't really thought about audience in terms of really engaging with our audience to, to start with. Um, but that's changed a lot and has come through to um, our documentary film that we're making now. I was going to say, we, we've already mentioned photography, dance, visual arts there's sometimes a preconceived idea of what art might be mm. um, and presumably those barriers mean or categories mean nothing whatsoever to Dover Arts Development That's true and, and that's something we have to um, continually sort of make aware I think um, it's so much part of us that very often we forget to even address that issue and uh, then get surprised because suddenly mentioning musicians and they think, well, that's not your, that's, that's not where you're meant to be. But no, everything is about this mysterious process of, of a, a human being turning the energy that they have inside and their consciousness and making something with it. I mean, I always say that is, is really an, a, an artwork, mm. you know, in I, I go in yeah. itself yeah. that um, I feel the same about dad as I do about creating a painting. You know, it's just too much color this direction. I need to pull in a bit here, move something here, um, don't know quite what's going wrong here, but um, I'll try this, and it's this constant dialogue, um, as, as is Dad, and the, the, the thing that we very much um, avoid is being uh, institutionalized, or in any way because we've done something well one time, and then people thinking, oh, that would be useful, Dad can do that. No, Dad can't do that well if it's not coming really from the spirit, from really that that's the thing we need to do. So it's, it's a work of passion. Yes, exactly. And I, I have the same sort of idea in terms of the way I work. Is this something that doesn't have a form, takes on a form? Mm. It becomes no something. Form. No, yes. And I think Dad does that. It takes on its, something comes into being, something takes on a shape. And, but it's not a very, and then it has a sort of defined shape for a while and then something else happens. And that's very much how, how we think about mm. work. And I, I suppose in a way, um, having all these different activities or these different types of projects, that that diversity is, is, uh, focused really through having, um, Dover as our, as our kind of focus or as right. our hub. And so we've got this kind of geographical focus, but it, it's a focus. It's not a kind of limiting yeah, yeah. factor. It, you know, our projects can go international, and we've ha worked with, with with artists and photographers from you know across across the channel. Yeah. So, so so Dover is not there to, to limit, but it, it just helps to kind of give a, a, a centre to some of these kind of very diverse things that we do. And you mentioned just there a project that uh, you've been working on, which is very Dover-centric. Uh, you're at a very exciting point in time at the moment with new premises, but also with the Watermark project. Yes, I mean, the, the, the new studio is extremely uh, exciting. Having avoided premises, um, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've taken this offer, um, wonderful space, and we are just about to finish our documentary on Buckland Mill, which right the way through has been an incredibly exciting um, project whereby participation, we could not have made the film without the participation of the 300 former employees that we now know. We started with one DVD put into my handbag by one former employee who didn't want to be interviewed. And from there we, bu we built the contact out so that we had this reunion event, which is also part of the film, where they all came back together again. I think for all the former employees, it's been a chance to speak about this very traumatic ending of the mill, which happened um, very suddenly. Um, and it's also been a chance for many to get together with people that they 
thought that maybe they would never get together with again. And they have given us the material for what we feel is a very exciting film, which is humorous, it's sad, it's real, the people are very real, it's about Dover, but it's a story of industrialization, which is happening in all over the world. So um, I think its reach will be far beyond Dover, but it is a story about Dover and it goes out from Dover. For information regarding Dover Arts Development and their new studio space, email daddirect at info at dadonline.eu or keep listening to DCR. This is DCR.